into Christ have been put, you have put on Christ. So like I said, the goal is for, you to, for us to start seeing the words in Christ in a whole new way. So it to make a new meaning. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, For he hath made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made righteous of God in him. Now, I'm, I'm going through a lot of in him, in Christ, in him, in Christ scriptures. There are 100, over 135 of them that scholars have identified in the New Testament. And that is not a coincidence. Ephesians 1, 4 says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. That's another in him, in Christ's scripture. For everything that God did in Christ, for everything that happened to Christ, there is something happening in Christ. He was uh, wounded, we are healed. He was killed. We came alive. He, he was held captive. We were set free. So that's what's happening in Christ, not just to Christ. So uh, it, it was made sin. God put our sin upon him. We were made righteous. He was rejected. We were accepted. So when you got saved, you were joined to Christ. Do you know what it means to be joined to Christ? That God sees you in Christ. God attached you to Christ. God put you in Christ. And I'm talking about you and me. This, is, this ought to transform, translate beyond knowledge to revelation. This has to go from something I know into something I am. Because the Bible is not a book to look at. We look at the Bible lots of times to, because we see to look at something. To, we, we search in the word of scriptures what to do, which is, which is nice and fine, you know. But really what we should be doing is searching in scriptures for what we are. Not just something to do or not something to know but something to be. For example, the Bible says, the scripture says we've been engrafted into Christ. That's what how the Amplified Bible, and I'm going to get to specific scriptures on that soon. Um, if any man be in Christ, is engrafted into Christ. Particularly, that's the way the room, uh, the, uh, if you check the book of Romans, chapter 11 from verse 17 to 24, it talks about the engrafting. Now, this is all you trying to understand what it means to be in Christ. And the examples that we use are very important. Christ taught the kingdom of God at a period when there were no Bibles. There was no Genesis to Revelation. They only had scrolls at the time, and those scrolls were kept in the temple. So people didn't have copies. and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the teachers and the rabbis read them, they, they memorized, they had these scriptures from the, the Torah, from the, from the Genesis, from Genesis to Deuteronomy or Leviticus in their head. So, and here is Jesus trying to present the picture of the kingdom, what he has brought for the people. So he has to use everyday examples. He has to use farming. He has to use carpentry. He has to use... Uh, sowing and reaping. He has to use a lot of examples and he will say the kingdom is like that because he couldn't say open to the book of Ephesians, open to the book of, of Romans like we do today. So uh, here's this metaphor like, okay, for instance, I, I in the show school, sh uh, kids show that I, 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 I saw, uh, it's a live stage event, kids had to, to wear costume and act like different animals. It was like we were acting out the animal kingdom story. And they were already on stage and there were two kids missing because the parents didn't drop them off on time. And they were looking through the door to see if these kids are going to come. And eventually these kids show up from backstage and they were ready to go on dressing their costume and everything looked fine. But something strange started happening 
one of the kids starts, the one wearing a lion's costume starts acting like a kangaroo, and the one uh, uh, wearing a kangaroo's costume happened to be acting like a lion, roaring, and the, the kangaroo one was jumping all around the place. And what they found out, it became apparent, the teacher had to apologize to the audience because it became apparent that as the kids came late, they ran straight to the dark room behind the stage. There were no lights in the room. They just walked, they just, yeah, like there were no lights. So they just wore whatever they saw there, came on stage, and they were acting the opposite of what they should be happy acting like now that's what we do when we are in christ and we are acting like we are in the world you are no longer in the world you are now in christ now the question here is you've got to act like who you are not like a kid who is dressed in a uniform or in a costume of a lion but acting like a kangaroo the bible says you have put on christ that's the that's exactly how the scripture this verse describes, it says you have put on Christ. Now think of like those chickens who have put on the costume. Now they have to act like what they're wearing. Now they have to act like what they are putting on. You have put on Christ. Start, start talking like you, who you are. Start thinking like who you are. Start acting. It's, start, it's, it's time to start acting like who you are. This is an identity issue. This is not a knowledge in the head. It's not a script. It's, an, it's a matter of identity, not just information. It's a matter of identity. It's got to become an active knowledge. There's, some, there's, there's passive knowledge and there's active knowledge. I use this example all the time. You tell me that, that uh, who's the president of, of, of Germany? Or who's, who's the president of, name a president, you know, a president of a country? Like Britain. Britain, the prime minister is Gordon, Gordon somebody. I can't remember his name. <laughs> but that's just information for me that is, is, it doesn't change the price of bread in, in Walmart. It doesn't change the price of fruits in the market. It's just not active knowledge. What's active knowledge? That's passive knowledge. Active knowledge is something you, that you act upon every day that determines how you wake up. It determines what, where you go daily. For instance, if you are the director of, of operations in your company, that's, that's, you know that you're the director of operations. It makes you wake up at a certain time in the day. It makes you know what time to get in the car. It makes you know what time, how long you drive for and how many days you're out of the house in a week that's active knowledge that's knowledge that is doing something that is determining how the course of your life being in christ is an active knowledge it ought to change something it has it's knowledge that has an effect on your daily life another story that comes to mind is the lion king story simba the and, and i'm sure most of us every one of us has seen lion king the thing with down the, with simba is that he felt differently all his life until he saw another lion called Nala, a childhood friend. He's been removed from his clan, clan. He's been removed from the pride, and he grows up with some other species that are not like him. And as a child, he's almost lost all the memory of where he's from. So, uh, but until he saw Nala, that's when he saw, when he saw Nala was when he saw what he really looked like. Before then, he acted different, thought different, spoke differently, fed on grass and worms. Many of us are feeding on stuff that is not what we are meant to feed on because of an identity crisis. It's because root, deep down in our heart and soul and our spirit, we really don't know who we are. So we're feeding on what everybody else is feeding on until it finally hit him. This is who I am. When he saw Nala, he says to himself, this is what I look like. There was no mirrors. So he really couldn't see how he has evolved, how he has developed. But something inside of him clicked when he saw Nala. Something inside of him jumped up when he saw Nala. 
this is the mirror. This is what I look like. So, uh, and I, he begins to say to himself, I belong in a tribe. This is not my tribe. Some of us have been hanging out with the wrong tribe. We've not really had the right sense of identity in who we are. But until we meet Jesus, when you finally meet Jesus, that's when you really find your tribe. Wow, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> when God put us in Christ, he produced something in us. He produced, when Christ died and rose up, what did he do? He produced many other lions after his own kind. He became the firstborn among the sons, among the living. So now you begin to see yourself, see you in that tribe. My goodness, go in the tribe that where God shuts the mouth of lions when they get in a lion's cave. That's the tribe that you belong to. What is that? What is the information that I need to know about my tribal revelation? What identity do I need to know about tribe? This is the tribe where God delivers from the fiery furnace. That's the tribe I belong to. What, is the inform what do I need to know about this tribe? This is the tribe where God brings you out of slavery. My God, the tribe that is not supposed to be a slave, the tribe that is not supposed to be oppressed, the tribe that's not supposed to be sick, the tribe that's not supposed to be, to be oppressed, depressed, discouraged, that is the tribe, that is the gene that runs in our tribe. Because you can't understand tribe outside of genealogy. You really can't understand family out of, outside of DNA. This is a blood covenant, people of God. That blood was involved when God sent Jesus to die for us, redeem us, and put us back in himself. Blood, there was a blood exchange. My goodness. And what is in the blood? The life, the Bible says the life is in the blood. So something was paid for our redemption. It's not dollars. It's not pound sterling. It's not euro. It's not gold or silver. It's not Bitcoin. It's, it's, it is the highest form of payment called blood. That's where the DNA resides. My goodness. We have been engrafted into Christ. That Ephesians 2, 11 to 13, read at your own convenience, says that Ephesians 2, 19 says that, I'll, I'll say those scriptures again, Ephesians 2, 11 to 13, Ephesians 2, 19, Ephesians 3, 6, and the one particularly that I'm dwelling on is Romans 11, 17 to 24. That's where it says we have been engrafted. And I'm just going to touch on this. We see, I can't finish my note today. We've got to discuss. But... What does it mean to be engrafted? How did I get engrafted? Isaiah 53, one of the verses in Isaiah 53 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And by his stripes, we are healed. So when Jesus was wounded, we got engrafted. Now, I studied a little about gra uh, grafting and grafting in plants, and uh, it's, it's interesting what you discover. Because when, if a branch must, must be engrafted, it must be taped to, to the branch of a tree. There must be a taping. There, there has to be a joining. There has to be a taping. You can't engraft in, in isolation. You can engraft by proxy. It's a joining to a tree. Mm -hmm. My goodness. That tells you how you've been joined. If you understand this alone, if we, if we even don't even go further, you are part of Christ. He is the vine and you are the branch. That's what he said with his own mouth. It's not, I didn't say it. He says he is the vine and I am the branch inside of the vine. First of all, I got to know that if something is not in the vine, it's not supposed to be in the branch. And it says then, you have been, my goodness, I hope I can finish this in two, in three minutes. You have been engrafted. 
When he was wounded, we were engrafted. Now, one thing uh, then they say uh, about grafting that I've seen also, that my teacher taught me also, is that when, if, 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 if there must be a grafting, there must first of all be a wounding. There must be an identical wounding or an identical cut on the plant and the branch. So the, it's not just a cut. There must be a cutting one on both sides. Jesus was wounded. That's when he was caught. <laughs> and we were wounded in our iniquities. So there was, there was cutting on both sides, on both the vine and the branch. Secondly, the cut must be identical. So if it's a slant on the branch, it must be a slant on, 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 the, on, 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 the, on the tree. If it's a groove, it has to be a groove or else they won't tape correctly. I have a botanist beside me here. If, it's, if, it's, if, 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 you are, if you are slanting it here, it has to be a slant on that side. If, you, if it's a groove, it has to be a groove. If it's a, just a beveled edge, it has to be... It has to be an identical wounding mm -hmm. so that as they grow together, the experience begins to change the genetics of that plant. Mm -hmm. My goodness. So when Jesus was wounded, he was caught with the same identical condition that we have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bible says we have not a high priest who is not subject to the passions of our infirmities. So that he, he went through everything we go through. It's an identical wounding. He took our sin, our curse, our guilt, our shame, our death. And when he was wounded, we were engrafted. My goodness. So Paul says, if you were there in his death, you had to have been there in his resurrection. Because if it was just his death, then he is dead. But if he died for you, if he died on our behalf and he resurrected on our behalf, then his death was our death. His resurrection was our resurrection. My goodness. Romans 6 it says, our old man was crucified. One translation says, in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ, Paul said, we were there. We were there. We were there. And the goal of this is identity. The goal of all of this is the right sense of identity. Imagine that all the things that we've shared today becomes a daily reality that we wake up by every day and act on every day. This is what I dwell on and for years and years, and I still continue to do that, my goal is making this a daily reality in every circumstance, in every experience, in everything. Now, this is time to start to imagine yourself differently. This being a reality. This is time to begin to imagine your life differently based on this reality. This is time to begin to imagine yourself, you know, to see ourselves differently based on this revelation and based on this reality. The goal is that we must begin to imbibe the in Christ mentality. <laughs> and that the word in Christ has to make a new meaning in our daily realities, in our thinking, in our actions, in the way, in our self-image, most important.